Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Arcane Assist. I'm Rebecca, joined this week by Evan. How's it going, Evan? Good, thanks. Yourself? Great. Uh, we're getting to show off some Retribution versus Infernals. Yeah. It's pretty pretty exciting. Uh, I'm bringing the evil, terrible Infernals from beyond this world to wreak havoc and terror upon all of Imran, and Evan is playing Retribution, flanked and assisted by Void Archons from beyond time and space to protect the world from the evil invaders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, showing off more Archons. Yay, three weeks in a row. Pretty great. Um, so this week we're br- bringing back the two Void Archons that we've got in a Retribution list. Headed by Viros 1, we've got Imperatus, Moros, four Griffins. If you haven't figured it out yet, it is in Shadows of the Retribution because you get Void Archons in this one. <laughs> uh, we've got Narn, Iris, two Void Archons, two Arcanist Mechanics, a minimum unit of Infiltrators, as well as a minimum unit of Strike Force with the Commander and a Solus Escort. So basically, uh, a bunch of different infantry that are going to help us with flanking, as well as some uh, some nice little sniper shots that are going to take out important pieces, and Virus's normal assortment of Griffins that are going to do a ton of damage on the feet turn and have plenty of things to flank off of. Yeah, seems uh, seems pretty solid. Fairly battle group heavy, but also some good support tools. Uh, for me, I'm playing Zataroth. Uh, she's the kind of anti-range, shadowy, trickster Infernal Master. Uh, my battle group is a Desolator, a Lamenter, a Shrieker, and a Soulstalker. I have an Infernal Gate. My requisition choices are two Umbral Guardians and a trio of Dark Sentinels attached to my single Max Cultist Band with Orin uh, Master Preceptor. Uh, I have Valen, the Fallen Knight, Saxon Auric, uh, Eilish, uh, Hermit, and a max unit of Grievers. Cool, cool. So we rolled off. Uh, I think Evan won the die roll this time, but uh, elected to choose side. And uh, I get to go first. So without further ado, we'll jump right into it. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, Zataroth gets to deploy fairly centrally, hanging out with her little octopus friend. Uh, I've got a Soul Stalker and a Tormentor. Uh, pardon me, a Desolator. Uh, and then I've got the Shrieker, kind of playing the bottom spot here, and a Lamenter again fairly centrally. Uh, I think the key with um, with Zataroth is she really... Uh, she likes the slightly higher defense uh, horrors because of the power of her feet. And I think feeding at kind of the really opportune moment to to buy yourself time and space for attrition is a, is a very big deal. Uh, I deploy a bunch of Grievers, uh, and then I rethink it immediately. I decide that I want the Grievers to be threatening the far zone. Uh, they're a pretty good set of guns. Um, so they've got a lot of tools for accessing the zones that Evan might be trying to like kind of lightly contest or have a piece fairly far back they can dig deep into those and uh, unspread the net I, I need the ability to dig deep into that zone they also have eyeless sight so there's something that can see the um the strike force models that he's got and the infiltrators uh, i think you like to ambush your infiltrators is that right yes yeah that makes a lot of sense to me uh and i'm just sort of finding spots for where my cultists are going to end up again i want them to kind of be able to spread out and fan fairly wide but they also have to be restricted to that command eight Still trying to play the game with uh, one unit of cultists. We'll see if I end up deciding two is better. I've seen some lists that actually run three units of cultists, which is kind of wild. But if you want to leverage ambush, I feel like you probably need quite a few cultists because you end up eating them pretty quickly. Makes sense. So uh, that's a hungry gal. <laughs> so uh, we're going to deploy mostly a line of griffins with Imperatus and Viros in the middle, as well as flanking Voicar- Void Archons that are going to try to you know, play around with the flags, make sure they're they're being aggressive with both of them, especially the bottom one, because uh, it can hold one, and it's fairly good at it, because if it gets souls, it can just go in corporeal every round, and it's okay with that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, I, I mean, I'm not sure that's that helpful against internals. I guess, yeah, fair enough. Most of my attacks are magical. Fair enough. But in, in a normal game, I don't know, I guess, yeah. Against not horrible void demons. Void demons from beyond space and time. 
going in Caboreal is occasionally good tech. We're going to, I think, just remove the terrain piece we're putting the gate on top of and say, it's not there anymore and it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could have mattered because um, I have tacticians, so I end up going through the gate fairly often. So if there was rough terrain underneath it, it might matter. But everything on that side of the board has flight. Yeah, we're going to say it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, min infiltrators right in the middle doing their best. Strike force, right? This, this is your strike force, your infiltrators? Are yes, sorry. I mix the two up because they both seem like things that would be infiltrating. <laughs> um, strike force are striking, infiltrators are infiltrating. That's how you tell the difference. I see. Uh, well, they're in the middle. And they've got their crossbows at the ready. And so far, touch wood, the crossbows are all staying together. If you've ever assembled major strike force, you'll know that that is not a guarantee. Hmm. They are a lovely little cross piece of crossbow that has to be glued separately. It's my favorite piece. Yay. <laughs> I think I pinned them. I think I pinned those crossbow ends. That seems like the move. It was tedious. I so the hermit runs right up the middle of the board, says hermit things. Hey, I'm a hermit. So, uh, Zetaroth's long shadows is one of my favorite features of her as a caster. Um, it, it gives minus three range to things that shoot stuff in her command of 12. So her, her own models, like infernal models within 12, but that's everything in this list. Uh, I realized that I probably just want to kill Saxon. So he just runs right across the board into, um, the sort of summoning cost reduction range of the gate, uh, which we catch now has a couple of souls on it. So the gate's just sitting there with a few souls. And the Grievers are going to go. Grievers are just going to run up the board as fast as they can. Uh, if Evan decides to pick a couple of them off, I can return a few of them with the gate. So that's kind of why they're hanging out near that gate. Be available as uh, recurrable forces. Immediately flip the gate over, which is awesome. It is, uh, it is tall and forwardly deployed, and I put it fairly centrally. So this does happen from time to time. Fortunately, it's a pretty durable piece, literally. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just two solid chunks of resin. Yeah, yeah. It's the whole model. Anchored nicely to a base. So I summon a second Lamenter. Uh, I do this partly because I can do it for two Essence, and Zadaroth has a lot of spells she wants to get on the first turn. She casts Scything Touch, and then she also casts uh, Torment of... It's Warpath. It's Warpath. We're just going to call it Warpath. Yeah. Let's be real. It's I think it's Rites of Torment. Rites of Torment? Yeah, that but, sounds, sounds correct. But it's not like bad. like rights as in like you know the bill of rights, but like rights as in like rituals. You know, it's evil shit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they're tormenting. Yeah, you can you know, I guess enhanced lam- interrogation. Those techniques? ones are lament. Uh, I guess rights of torment. Yeah, it, it, it's warpath. The yeah. point is, it's warpath. It's uh, it's warlike for sure. Uh, so the desolator runs up. Uh, the soul stalker runs up. Uh, both of them have put themselves in position where if the gate wanted to move them, it could. Um, they're kind of a little tied up by Grievers, though, so it's not necessarily a huge uh, big deal. I noticed that I didn't unpack Moros from my bag, so I leave the room to go get him. Yep. Uh, these are the kind of things you can do when you trust your opponents. Uh, the cultists are just kind of walking up. They're going to fill that Lamentor back up to full, uh, the one that was that was summoned, should I say. Um, you know, Oren's in position fairly aggressively. Uh, I get to run... Uh, Valen is, again, playing the board fairly centrally. Uh, Long Shadows is not affecting everything on the board right now, but it's getting a lot of the things that I care about. Uh, and the Shrieker just runs up. And then Eilish runs up, just get behind some cover. Eilish might die next turn. I haven't decided yet. Yeah. So while we have an extra moment here, and we pause the clock and both leave the room, Um <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about what your list is meant to be doing and what your goals are for this turn. So Xanderoth has a really flexible spell list. She kind of has just a bunch of things she can do. Uh, Her personal gun is her main method of collecting souls, so it's not spectacularly reliable, but every once in a while it comes up pretty nicely. Um, She has Black Spot, which is a defense debuff. It's one of the ways that Infernals have to fix Matt, and it's really effective with, like, Grievers who can do, like, a two-person CRA and then kind of waterfall the generated shot into a second CRA and kind of functionally have, like, plus four rat and plus two damage, which is fairly cool. She's also a rebuke caster, so she's got some good control tools for, like, locking down units and holding them back. Rites of Torment, we already talked about a little bit as Warpath, but it's one of the ways that I feel like she can leverage her battle group for kind of never quite being where you think they're going to be. 
Um, speaking of which, she is, of course, a Ghost Walk caster. And then her damage buff is, is Scything Touch. So I, I've used Scything Touch to really ramp up the eth- efficacy of uh, Soulstalkers before. And I like Soulstalkers with her because they... They help her kind of collect more souls when normally she's stuck using this just kind of like gun with reload one is her main method of getting souls. Uh, so when we found Moros, he was in two pieces. So we quickly glue him back together and put him on the table. Yep. So crisis averted. Crisis averted. Moving on to our turn. Uh, we move on to the strike force who are going to take a couple of shots at these grievers. We measure to make sure we're going to be in range even after long shadows. Mm -hmm. However, uh, what I'm not considering while making these shots is the fact that Umbro guardians exist, or in this case, don't yet. I love Umbro guardians so much. Umbro guardians. I think playing around them is going to be the, the key to, you know, learning how to play around infernals for the most part, because they're just, they're wild models. And there's probably always going to be at least one. And it's just something you have to keep in the back of your mind anytime you're playing against this faction. Because they're just going to be there. And by be there, I mean not there until you hate them. Um, so I'm going to try to take a couple of shots at these Grievers, take a couple of off of them off the table. I want to take out more than two just so there's a, a net gain from this um, because the gate is able to bring back two at the moment. So the first thing that happens is you shoot one, and I'm like, I'll bring an Umbral Guardian out. And you're like, fah. <laughs> yep, hate it. Hate everything about it. And I was like, oh, that's a... Uh, that exists and also has a shield guard. Great. I guess I'll roll damage again instead, and I don't do anything. Then I'm like, shoot the next one. Maybe you shield guard it. Great. I, I do some points of damage to the Elm Guardian. Now I don't have to worry about that. Now I'm allowed to kill a Griever. So I do. In fact, I think you kill two. Uh, I kill two Grievers. Which is exactly as many as I can bring back. Yep. Sure is. Does that feel bad? So I don't think it's as bad as it could have been, like, Popping an Umbral Guardian this early is nice. It means my Void Archons later on are going to be able to spray without much worries. That said, there's still an, another Umbral Guardian that isn't on the table yet. Yeah. But gives us some more options like that. Um, Iris, I'm, I want so badly to just go and poke the Hermit for one right now with Phantom Shot, but I know she's going to die later if I do that. So I'm just jockeying for position, waiting to to have that moment where I can go and deadly shot the Hermit for three with her. Because I just need her to be able to do that uh, when it comes up. I need to be able to pop two shots into the Hermit with the Strike Force and then just kill it with, with the three damage from Iris and then never worry about it again. For my part, I am saving an Umbral Guardian for that. <laughs> yep. Yes, you are. So Viros cast mobility moved up, put inviolable resolve on what Imperius or himself. Uh, so he puts I R on. Uh, I think it's Imperius because I move up fairly aggressively with Imperius. Mobility is out. Uh, everyone gets hit by it, so we're good. Ward Archon runs up, stays in cover. Griffin's gonna run around this building to be in control still. At the end of it, he's gonna move up fairly aggressively, basically. Using it to trade a little bit. And then we're just going to run, run, run Griffins. Get them where we need them to be. Uh, Narn's also going to move up fairly aggressively. Hide behind that house and get ready to do some flanking next turn when we want to pop our feet. Because Viros is typically a turn turn two. Or like top of three, bottom of two feet caster. Where it's like, okay, everything's about to get stuck in or has already gotten stuck in. Let's go. Let's clean a house. Let's let's make sure we get that that additional die of damage and that extra die to hit, and uh, let's let's take some things out now. Um, Griffin moves up, super aggressive. We have one more. It's gonna kind of hang back a little bit more compared to everyone else, and then this void archon, like I said, trying to control this little flag down here. Eight point solo scores the flag. I maybe maybe next turn too. Maybe right? next like it's turn. not even not even yeah. quite there yet. Means you gotta put a put some effort in, and there's Narn. Hello, Narn. He goes forever. He does. You can go through people, go through terrain. Can't go through buildings. Can't, but can't go. Yeah, some terrain. Some not terrain. all. Iris is just yeah. I measure. I think about it. I'm like, no, can't do it. <laughs> holding her back, holding her in reserve. Yep. Iris is the best. 
So uh, first things first, uh, we put some gravers back into play. Uh, in command, within 12 of the gate, uh, in within three of another model on the unit. Uh, I face them backwards, just to indicate that they have to forfeit combat action this turn, which is something that Evan got to do as he, he restricted the number of shots that I have from Grievers this turn. And let's uh, let's jump into it. So the gate gets to spend those souls before it checks if it has zero souls to roll for D3, which is pretty cool because it's a maintenance and control. Uh, so it does get a soul back after spending down to zero. Cool. Uh, and... Zadaroth kills someone and gets all of her focus back. Upkeeps both Scything Touch and Rates of Torment, and she is on five essence. That's not spooky or anything. It's a little spooky. Rites of Torment. Rituals of Evil. Or whatever you cool kids call it. Verb of now. Verb of now. Solid. It's right. Yeah, I guess. No, fair enough. I don't know. English is a dumb language. It could be anything at this point. Well, I mean, reason tells us otherwise, but I like your thing too. <laughs> so uh, I got an Umbral Guardian, and I'm like, yeah, let's do things with this cool Umbral Guardian. So he charges in at a uh, at the Griffin. Um, after carefully measuring it, I knock him over immediately. Uh, so he hasn't engaged these two strike first members. He's just engaged the Griffin, and he charges in uh, in range sufficient to get his buckler in as well. I'm saying he. I'm not sure what Umbral Guardians really are, but uh, the Buckler is only power 10, so it doesn't manage to do any damage to the Griffin. The Weapon Master charge attack missed, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to activate the Torment, or pardon me, Desolator next. Desolator advances and just puts a couple sprays in. Uh, we check that spray template to see that clips the Griffin, but not the um, Umbral Guardian, and then it gets a couple of sprays that can aim and stick into the Mage Hunters. So we'll start with a spray on the Griffin. If I was clever, I probably would activate this Desolator first to get extra damage from the Umbral Guardian, but I was not, alas. Uh, it is now corroded, and we opt to boost the damage. Uh, on hit, these sprays cause minus two armor. Yes. Uh, do not confuse this rule with withering humor from the... Crucible Guard Rockets, because this one is called Withering Death and does affect constructs. Indeed. Uh, withering Death is just a model hit by this weapon, suffers minus two armor for one turn, unless it has immunity to corrosion. Yes. Uh, I do kill a member of the Strike Force, uh, ending up giving that soul to the uh, the Void Archon at the back there. And yeah, that's, uh, that's it. You know, I've debuffed the Griffin, I've put it on Corrosion, I clipped another griffin with corrosion, and I killed a strike force member. So the desolator's just up there doing its thing. Uh, now we're going to activate the grievers. So the grievers have a couple of members who are going to do some aiming, a couple of ones who are moving into position. So that actually might have been a shot from something else. The gate? Maybe the gate. Might have been the gate. Uh, trigger rates of torment. Move a lamenter up. Yes, that was the gate, because the Void Archon got a soul. Right. Uh, Lamenter moves up to be annoying. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, it might come in and try to kill some things this turn, but I think it's mostly going to be focused on just putting its debuff out. I think this is almost certainly a feat turn. So the couple of uh, Grievers that were brought back this turn just move in to sort of flood the zone. The rest of them just kind of move into positions to take some shots. Uh, they have Isle of Sight base, so they're pretty good at killing things like Strike Force members. They're only uh, only base rat five though, so without Black Spot, which I haven't obviously cast yet, um, and without doing some fairly big CRAs, they're not necessarily doing a ton of work. So I'm gonna put a couple CRAs in, do a few points to the Griffin that got debuffed, um, the one at the back, not the one that's engaged by the Emperor Guardian. Can't see our end of melee, which sort of makes it feel like the order of activations this turn were a bit awkward. I think I got excited about using the Umbral Guardian and uh, charged it in before I should have. So I kill another Strike Force member, giving another soul to that Void Archon. Void Archons with souls are pretty scary, so I've got to be a little bit careful. They're also maybe the thing that's most effective against my list, so I'm trying to like manage them a little bit, but not necessarily doing a great job of that. 
Yeah, I mean, this the uh, the Umber Guardians certainly help against the sprays, but uh, for the most part, just getting able to to boost the damage on those sprays where needed, or yeah, I- Incorporeal is less helpful in this particular matchup, but but boosting helps. Yeah, they're, and and they can boost the sprays. They can boost their melee attacks. Like they're they're very very flexible with those souls. Importantly, they can't buy attacks, but sure. Yeah, that's that's relevant. Yeah. But it's a big spray. So Zanaroth moves up. Uh, she shoots her gun, uh, which is an AOE. Uh, it misses and just scatters. Uh, doesn't do enough damage to kill anything. She reloads it. Takes another shot. Uh, this time boosting. Um, or pardon me, she boosts boosts a blast damage roll, and she puts some more damage into, uh, I think it's um, somebody there, one of the... couple points into, not Iris. It's not Iris, somebody Iris. else, anyway. Yeah. Not Narn, not Iris. Somebody there takes some damage, anyway. Um, oh, the UA for the Mage Hunter Strike right. Force. the Mage That's Hunter Commander. Yep, took a couple points. I boosted on him just to see if I could kill him, but no, no luck. So I saw four. Need to roll a nine. Or I think I rolled a six. Uh, she debates doing a summon this turn uh, and decides not to. Uh, I consider killing off Oren. Um, I think about a few other options, but I, I decide I don't need to summon this turn. I'm just going to camp a little bit. So she reloads another shot. And she this time hits. I debate boosting damage. I choose not to. And I kill with blast another member of the strike force. And I think that's probably it. Uh, it is in range for the Void Archon to pick up its soul, though. Zadaroth does not get a soul. Oh, that's the damage boost against Imperatus, which does a few points. So she's camping two at the end of this, and she pops her feet. So... Uh, Eilish goes next. He puts Puppet Master out on the Soul Stalker. And now we're moving into Soul Stalker range. We got to move the Soul Stalker up um, with the Rites of Torment. And now we're going to charge it in on the Void Archon. Uh, I kind of hoped I might have a vector where I could charge the Void Archon and also get melee range onto the debuffed Griffin, but I can't. So the Soul Stalker's whole turn is just going to be about coming in and killing this Void Archon. Stacking over a wall, so it's effective defense, what, 15? Yes. Uh, no, uh, over a wall it means it's 16. Okay. Uh, he boosts the hit and connects. Uh, power is 15, but he's got Scything Touch, so effective 17. Dice even, he kills the Void Archon on his initial. Which is great. Pretty good. Feel Pretty happy good. about that. Yeah. So feats up, so I'm hoping he lives through this round. So I've left a fair bit of essence on him. Uh, I debate moving the Lamenter up. Um, mostly the Lamenter's there to kind of debuff Virus's personal melee threat. Uh, it's only minus two to hit against living models. But I do charge it in and hope to make some attacks against... Um, I think I think it hits the, the debuffed Griffin again. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one that's got the, the minus armor, and it sends its next initial in on the Mage Hunter. Uh, so I'm down to only a couple of activations left. I've got Cultists. I've got the Admonisher. Uh, I think I, I decide, like, thinking about it for a minute, I'm going to aim, and then I, I debate boosting to hit or not. I choose not to boost to hit, and I miss. Um, I was really hoping this little Shrieker guy would kill the Void Archon, which is terrifying. Um, needs a bit of a spike to do that. He's dice minus four. Needs to roll a 16 on three dice. That's that's pretty unlikely. But instead, he rolled double ones and just missed. So he's just there, hanging out in the zone, being being a friend. A friend to all. Uh, cultists move up a little bit. They kind of surround Zadaroth a little bit. Um, they put some... I think they actually don't have anywhere that they need to put Essence out to. Uh, and the Lamentor here moves up the board a little bit to supply his debuff to any living models that might come into range. Zadaroth's feet is up. So next it's the Hermit's activation. The Hermit is just, I think, running. Just runs right up the board. And uh, Valen moves to that fairly central position. Put his brother's keeper buff out there. Things can't be stationary or knocked down. And be the sort of central tactician piece. All right. So I'm like, Zadaros super far off the, off the board. Let's try killing her. Sure. Uh, 
I know your feet's up, so your def is fairly high. What? It's 18. 18? All right. So uh, with flank, I'm at 10, so I need 8s. All right. We can certainly try it. Why not? So I have two transfers. Mm -hmm. uh, and Imperatus has two initials, which because I think you can get him without needing to do anything. You charge for free because of the bond. Yep. Uh, mobility means you should get there regardless of the forest or anything else like that. And then you can buy three more attacks. Yep. If you miss, though, I get to teleport away. That's it's the true. nature of that's, my feet. That's, that's the big problem. So I think at this stage you're trying to see if there's anything you can do that can kind of help it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like get the Void Archon in there. Maybe yeah. put it, it out. Uh, I think you, you think for a moment about, like, what if I charge this thing with the Void Archon, kill it, move into position, and spray you, but then decide not to because then I summon an Umbral Guardian in the way? Uh, actually, I, I don't have the Umbral Guardian in my, in my head here because I'm thinking – if I spray, or, well, that that is one thought at, at one point. But I, I think I move on to if I go with the bottom Void Archon, spray the back line of cultists that you can't put an Umbral Guardian in front of Zadaroth with, right. kill one of them, and Void Walk in. Then I get Dark Shroud on you as well, which means that if, if I'm hitting hard enough, uh, I'm either killing you or I'm killing one of your one of your horrors. Um, which is also good. So that's what I'm measuring here. I can charge, and then with dual attack, I can do the spray and hit in one, two, three cultists. Uh, or, sorry, two cultists and Eilish, I think. Uh, yeah, it's two cultists and Eilish. So I can do that, um, which, is, uh, which is feeling pretty good. Uh, they're still a fairly high defense, too, but I only really need to hit one of them in order to kill them. It's at least what I was thinking. Um, I would need to hit two of them because an Umbral Guardian exists. Yay. Love those models. Uh, mean, they, you might just kill the Umbral Guardian, though. That's true. That that would also be very convenient for me. <laughs> so uh, that that's what we've got on the table now, but I'm like, before I do any of that, we're going to put our infiltrators in and get some Hopefully, kill some grievers, get some good flanks on the on the top side here. Uh, what else we got? We got in the middle. We've still got a ton of griffins. We've got moros. I think oh, moros could go and shoot Zadaroth and paralyze her. Wait, Wait no, umbral guardian. umbral guardian. That's the the shot I have the umbral guardian in mind for. Yep. Uh, I'm like, okay, well, what if I just go and kill this light over here? Nope. If I miss any of those attacks, then it teleports in front of Imperatus, and this run is over. Yep. So we basically just have to set up this assassination run and do it. And then and it then fails, do the rest of the turn. Yep. Decide decide what we recover into. Exactly. Zadaroth's feat is really weird and cagey. Sometimes it does nothing, and sometimes it totally ruins the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, plus three defense is. And and then teleporting is pretty pretty nuts. So uh, this Void Archon misses his attack against the uh, Screecher? Shrieker? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it teleports away. Yep. But that's fine. I have the facing to do this awesome spray tent I was talking about. Mm -hmm. You bump the gate again and remeasure it. Uh, you miss your first spray attack. Yep. Or no, I hit. Oh, you, 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 hit, you hit Eilish and the Umbral Guardian shows up. I'm like, oh. Well, hello, friend. Hello. Where are we going? It's all over the place. And then I roll against the other two cultists. Uh, see what I can do. Uh, I think I miss both of them and they teleport. It's like, great, they're teleporting in front of Zadaroth, but they're too small to actually block me in any meaningful way. So oh, I'm I know, okay I know what happened that. here. Uh, we thought you hit Eilish. But then oh. you're like, wait a minute, aren't you plus three defense? And I was like, oh, right. And then we, we caught that. Mm -hmm. So the Umbral Guardian did not show up, and instead you missed all three targets with a spray, and all three of them teleported in front of Zadaroth. It's like, okay, fair enough. Um, another line of play I was thinking about this game, just because mm -hmm. it's coming. Narn can shoot the Hermit and then silence him, so he can't cast any of his oh, spells. Oh, that's cute. Uh, I like that. However, this turn I'm using Narn to flank, so that won't happen um but is it is an option uh if i'm like i don't want you to ever cast master of ruin because it mostly just screws me over <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool tech um i feel like it's great once you've removed the umbral guardians yes which they're not removed uh well actually yeah one of them's still in because we didn't hit that because we backtracked that yeah that's still an umbral guardian in the bank um don't like that 
So this is a, a griffin going in on the soul stalker, I believe, just because it's over here and can't really come in the way. Uh, it can't can really it. block Imperatus. Yep. So we do the running with Narn, going with where that tree was. Narn's an acrobat, so he can move through Moros. And he can he's also speed seven. And so he's he, Pathfinder. And so. he's Pathfinder. And he, he's all of the I want to murder you rules. So he just gets to go wherever he except wants. For, except for murderous. I suppose that is be cool if he was literally a rule in the game. Uh, but he doesn't have that one. You're right. He's all the Touché. getting there rules. He's got all the, the, the trying to get there rules. Mm-hmm. And then we charge with Imperatus. So uh, Imperatus got concentrated power, is fully loaded. You put mobility up. Uh, you feed it, and you charge in. Uh, you need an eight to hit, and you missed. Uh, yep. That's not great. I'm like, okay, what can I do now? Well, there's this light here. I'll boost to hit it. I hit it, and I'm going to crush it. So you do not get the extra damage because there's no warrior models engaging this light, but you do a ton of damage. It's on, I think, four boxes left. Yeah. So you buy an attack on the Lamenter, and you... Is that the Lamenter you're hitting, or is that... I believe it's a Lamenter. Yep. Little ravager looking guy. Uh, oh no! Oh, you, and you then I, sorry. Then I attack a cultist who dodges away because I'm like, okay, I've done a lot of damage to this lamenter, but uh, I can't boost anymore. So I want to hit a cultist and make him fire burst, and then light all the cultists around him on fire. But he dodges instead. He dodges instead. Uh, and then we start using a griffin on the bottom side here. Yep. Or sorry, uh, virus. Virus went in and did some attacks earlier, but uh, now we're doing more damage to the soul stalker. Yeah, I think Virus called. put a couple hits onto the Soul Stalker. I yeah. think that was what he. Uh, and now we're attacking with a Griffon. Yep. Um, and we actually managed to take out a horror. Actually, that was Moros going in. Sorry. Yep. He's a little bit better at this than most. Because as soon as he hits the first time, you're paralyzed. Yeah, I think he boosted at his first attack and then had a bunch of other attacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now we're putting a Griffon in on the Soul Stalker. It's getting flank off Virus. It's uh, doing a truck to a ton of damage. Uh, I think it might kill this soul stalker here. Uh, it's trying. Leaves it alive on three, four boxes. Soul stalker is alive, but only barely. Interestingly, horrors can't be healed sort of anywhere like you can war beasts. They have to be healed kind of back up. So right now that that horror is uh, unable to charge for free, and may be one less die on attack and damage rolls until it gets healed. We, uh, we're just going to make some attacks with some infiltrators onto Grievers who are not in the feet, so we can actually kill some stuff. Yay. Pretty exciting. Killed two Grievers. Yeah. Uh, and then I think we're just kind of messing about with the, the models we have left. We roll 11. Attacking and my Umbral Guardian. We, uh, we do a lot of damage to this Umbral Guardian. And he took a couple points before. It is... So I think at this stage you kill the Umbral Guardian. Yes. <laughs> we just had not taken it off the table. That Griever is missed by an attack and teleports away. So I've got Griffin on the bottom uh, able to go after a Shrieker if I want it to. Yeah. Um, it's not going to yet, but this Griffin's going to run and basically block line of sight to Viros. Iris is going to... Er, sorry, not Iris. Uh, yeah, Iris. Yeah, she She's didn't quite have range to run to the flag, so yeah. she just kind of moves over. Exactly. Make sure she has ru- room to run later. Mm-hmm. This Griffin's going to go into the Shrieker just because it has nothing else to do. It's going to miss. The Shrieker's <laughs> going to teleport away. And the Griffin's going to be sad about it. All things considered, a pretty decent Zadaroth feed turn for me. Yeah, that uh, the plus th- three defense is uh, better than my plus two to hit. Conditional plus two to hit, too, because you really don't like it when I move away from the target you moved into flank. Uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty brutal, but it's off to you now. Yeah, how, how are you going to... So my rebuttal turn, uh, I think I'm going to heal that Soul Stalker, and I'm going to try to send it in on Virus. Um, Virus has a pretty incredible stat line. He's 15, 17, um, but I think you're, you're on basically no camp. I can get 
into you, maybe put an armor debuff on you, maybe get ruin from the uh, the hermit here. Mm -hmm. I think if I can swing your armor down by four points, then that Soulstalker can just boost, boost, boost. Mm -hmm. uh, Zadaroth does uh, kill a cultist to abate her hunger. Um, she upkeeps uh, both spells, um, and she uh, allocates to the Soulstalker, just, just the one needed. And the hermit moved up and cast ruin. So Grievers go next, mostly just kind of getting out of the way. A couple of them make attacks on infiltrators. Uh, the first one missed, second one hit in his back arc. Um, they get to give a soul to the gate. The gate will... Oh, pardon me, still, still more Grievers. Just making attack rolls against infiltrators. And then a big CRA on the Griffin. Just soften up my targets as much as possible. I think this uh, this Desolator is going to go in and try to put a spray that targets a Griffin and clips Virus. If I boost hit that spray, I might just do enough work. So that's, that's my next decision. So cultists are going. Uh, they are moving into position. Uh, Oren's moving up. Um, they're they're going to get a little weird here. Uh, they're going to kill each other. Uh, give the <laughs> souls to Orin, and Orin's going to use those to boost damage on Annihilation on Virus. So we kill a cultist. Orin gets a soul, because when his friends die, he gets the souls. And I guess they weren't that good friends if he let them die. Um, and then he makes a attack roll against the Griffin with Annihilate. And I think the... Uh, the Dark Sentinel there topped off the uh, Desolator as well. So it had all its essence available to boost. And they made a couple of like low-key attack rolls. Kills another friend, so Orin gets another soul. And Orin will... Yeah, we're just killing all of the cultists here. He's not a very kind friend. Uh, he casts... Annihilate. Uh, hits the Griffin. Boosts blast damage on Virus, uh, who is in ruin range, so he's dice minus five. Uh, I think I only do a point or two. Um, three points of damage. I don't know if the Virus has to take it, but it's just, just a little chip damage at this stage, right? Yeah. Just a, a couple of points before you actually send in the big big guns. Mm -hmm. Like this one. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's a POW-10 gun. It's not that big. We boost hit Virus with it. Uh, so the Griffin, we, we hit... Virus, we, I think, miss but reroll with Puppet Master, and that one hits. Yes. And then we boost damage on Virus. So now that you're under Ruin and you've been hit by the Withering Death, uh, you have minus four armor. So this is now POW minus three. Mm -hmm. we make another attack on Virus that boosts to hit. And we get our last damage boost going down to zero Essence. He'll disappear this turn if the game is still going. And that does a bunch more damage to virus which i think you reduced at this stage yeah i think i reduced the first spray and then didn't have a focus at the, for this one right um so uh i'm gonna take some more damage virus is not having fun he does not have a ton of boxes left so zadaroth activates uh i have to heal the soul stalker but i don't have to heal it for a ton i just have to heal it for a little bit uh, because i don't need it to have a free run and charge i just need it to be able to roll all of its dice Yep. So it activates, uh, advances into Virus, and it boosts to hit its first initial. Uh, with an 8 plus my 6, that's a 14. That actually misses. So it will boost to hit its second initial. And that one hits with a 9. I boost damage. This is only POW 15, but that's sufficient to kill Virus. He, uh, he gets eated by a soul stalker. Eated so hard. And Zadaroth gets the soul. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's our, I, I think, you know, we. I played a few games of Infernals, but they're very much still a new faction for both us and for the channel. Indeed. Uh, so if you have feedback, rules we got wrong, you know, stuff that we could have done differently or, or new tactics or list ideas, we're, we're very open to it. Mm -hmm. um, as, as always, you know, for our Patreon subscribers, if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you very much for supporting us. We do appreciate it. If you have list suggestions or ideas, feel free to put them in the comments below or talk about them. Uh, and to everyone who's watching this on YouTube, thank you for, you know, being a subscriber, checking out our work and appreciating, I hope, I hope appreciating the games that we're playing. I think we, we try, we have a good time. We, we laugh, we love, we live. And with that, folks, <laughs> thank you very much for watching. We will see you 
next week.